Clover was designed by Neville Page, an industrial designer turned creature designer who has still now created creatures found in films like Avatar, Super 8, Prometheus and various Star Trek films. He is also currently instructing students at Norman School of Visual Effects in Hollywood. To start, we can give some context as to where Clover came from. In the third Cloverfield film, The Cloverfield Paradox, a failed scientific experiment involving an enormous particle accelerator causes dimensions to send material between each other independent of time. This leads to Clover being transferred from one dimension to our Earth in the early 21st century. In various interviews, creature designer Neville Page and director J.J. Abrams reveal Clover to be a spooked infant who is separated from its mother, comparing it to a child being attacked by a swarm of bees. Clover being separated from its mother indicates that the mother stays with the hatchlings for some time. Clover also has no apparent navel or nipple, so it is oviparous, which also makes it very likely that Clover has multiple siblings. Clover is a bilaterally symmetrical vertebrate, with an endoskeleton and flesh, and he is active day and night on ground and in water, so he is probably an endotherm. Being a post-embryotic vertebrate, it is unlikely to undergo any form of metamorphism. So it will keep this form, but develop in general size and the size of its appendages. Clover has similar muscle and bone structures to humans, where the spine and nerve cord go along the dorsal surface and two forelimbs are attached to the thorax and two hind limbs are attached to the pelvis down the vertebrae, leading down to the sacrum with an additional tail appendage. The amount of vertebrae bone segments are similar down to the thoracic and lumbar vertebrae, but Clover has a notably longer uh, cervical vertebrae. A range of ribs connects to a sternum placed ventrally on its chest, and the pectoralis major muscle attaches to the sternum and laterally leads towards and under the deltoid. And we see a clear clavicle here. Also we see a familiar trapezius muscle leading up the neck from the deltoid in the rear. So overall the bone and muscle structure is very similar to that of a human or other bipedal vertebrates here on earth. Clover is possibly not a very intelligent animal. Large portions of its skull is allocated to an organ which stores oxygen, and with its large eyes, the rest of the skull size is too small to fit much else. So it is very likely to have a very small brain compared to other animals from his homeworld. The positions of the eyes may occlude the front vision a bit, but it may also have lenses which bend slight around a bit as well. But its most front-facing vision may be a bit blurred, similar to our peripheral vision. It's still good enough to notice spots at its feet, but it seems to primarily use its sense of smell to verify if it's a human. But this shows that it has a very developed olfactory nerve. It has a noticeable underbite. We can see here a very thin maxilla body, especially in the region of the alveolar process. So there is probably a chance for losing teeth if biting into muscular or solid tissue. So Clover probably prefers aquatic animals in its diet, or similar soft tissue land creatures. Another reason for preying on soft tissue animals is that we can see it has a very small and ineffective masseter muscle, which is what is used for moving the jaw up and down. We can see the ramus start off a bit narrow but ends with a large maxilla angle, creating a limited growth and complicated angle for attracting the masseter muscle as it attaches itself to the equivalent of the sagomatic process. So it likely has a very weak bite, and its sharp and long teeth which can go deep into the tissue of its prey are quite essential for holding it in place. Since it probably eats aquatic animals, its habitat is probably near water. But clover is very thin, has no fur, and has no webbing between fingers and toes, so it won't float in water easily. But especially its tail is well suited for swimming with its dorsal ventrally flattened surface, so it can probably move quickly in water. Its airbags probably doubles as a third or fourth lung, enabling it to stay on water for much longer periods of time. The organ is roughly around the equivalent of the temporal bone, and by looking at the adult species of clover, which can be seen at the end of the third film, 
this organ stays about the same relative size into adulthood. The posterior legs are relatively short compared to the mass of the anterior. Clover is a digitigrade, so it walks on its toes and has long metatharsals leading down to the phalanges. The femur seems to be slightly bent, or there could also be some additional joints that has evolved around the knee. It has a short femur and tibia, and a very small pelvis compared to its thorax and arms. Being an infant, carrying too much weight on bone and muscle structures, which are still hardening, could cause long-term mobility problems. So it walks as a quadruped, where its arms will be the main locomotory structure and provide upper body support, while its hind legs mostly carry the weight of the tail and the pelvis. Its arms are quite long and good for reaching, but it does not show its use of them as a means of grabbing. It attacks using its mouth instead, as seen when it attacks the helicopter as well as when it attacks organisms on the ground. It does use its arms for throwing objects, however. The structure growing out of its stomach resembles that of tentacles of an octopus. They are boneless appendages, which are able to bend by using transverse muscles, which provide resistance to longitudinal compression as the arm contracts. Being boneless, they are very flexible, and for instance octopuses do incredible things with this capability. The purpose of this structure on clover is not quite clear. It is possible it simply does not have a utility in the situation we observe it. It is also possible it is a vestigial structure, so it is just a leftover from its ancestry and no longer has any biological role. Or it can also be an incipient structure, meaning it is a new appendage which has yet to find a biological role. New structures or incipient structures are quite rare because it puts the species at a disadvantage as it takes time for the structure to serve a biological role. Every incipient structure has to use energy to be built while those without it does not have to use energy on producing such. So clover species are potentially at a high risk of being extinct on its home world compared to other animals of the same order, because they don't have to sacrifice energy for building this structure. If it continues to grow however, it might become an advantage if it comes to a point where it becomes a form of utility, where it can change its species behavior in a manner which is beneficial to its survival. Oh, oh, oh.